Blizzard the Howler fusion is coming to an end. And if you want to know the easy way to complete these fusions free to play without spending any money, stick around. Up, guys, finally he sleeps here. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to complete these fusion events without spending any cash on your way. There is a way to do it, and it's all about being prepared and knowing what to expect, uh, that you don't have to really go into any of these uh, any more than just being well prepared. So we're gonna talk about strategy for that. This is something that kind of repeat whenever the new fusion events come along. So if you're still struggling with these of fusion events, stick around, it should be able to help you. First though, make sure you subscribe here at YouTube, that way you never miss when any of these uh, videos go live for Raid Shadow Legends. And then this is kind of a repeating information that we kind of pump out every couple of months when these fusion events come out. Um, I'm thinking about this, this might just be a recurring video for uh, new people that come into the game and are looking for how to be able to do this, to be able to claim these fusions simply and for free. So let's take a look at it and dive right in. The first thing you're going to need to know on how to be able to complete the... Uh, if you want the fusions and you want to be able to complete them without having a whole lot of trouble coming into it, there are a handful of techniques here if you want to be able to do these fusions without spending hard-earned cash each month on the way to be able to do it, you need to understand the cycle for the fusions and what you need to do to be able to be more prepared. And a lot of that comes down to what you're not doing. Not just what you are doing, but what you're not doing. So the first thing to remember is you need to stockpile your shards. That means when there's no fusion event running, you're not using shards each day there's a, a quest that requires you to open up some shards just use mystery for that but don't forget to put back every shard you possibly can on your way to the next fusion event uh, the easiest shards to come up with are mystery shards you're going to constantly check in the market and buy you can see there's three purchases there they were mystery shards. 5,000 coins get you a mystery shard. If one of the ancients pop up for 200,000 coins, make sure you collect it. The shards are the most important element to be able to use to do the fusions easily each month at the release. And don't discredit mystery shards because they can make a big difference if you are collecting them and you're using them as needed when the events come around for the fusion. So the other place to be able to claim these is in the dungeons. There are a lot of shards that pop up in the dungeons, specifically like as you're working through some of the major ones, there are always item drops in here, like uh, Ice Golem gives ancients and mysteries. So as you're completing events during a fusion, you're gonna earn more shards on the way. Campaign only gives out mystery shards, but those will make a big difference. If you've got 500 shards saved up, uh, 500 mysteries is equal to one of the sacred shards. So it, you know, if you're getting one point for a mystery shard in a summon rush, but you're getting 20 points in an ancient, so every 20 mystery shards you collect, it's the same amount of points that get you can get for one ancient shard. There's a difference between the two kind of uh, champion pulling events. We have summon rush and we have champion chase. Champion chase is just about achieving the players, the champions in the game any way you can. Whereas the summon rush is all about what kind of shards you use to summon. Uh, the events themselves give out a, a lot of uh, shards. Like if we go to the heroes pass, which is open right now, we should have, are there, I've already collected. I think there was shards. Were there no shards in here? There's no shards in here. Let's go to Dungeon Divers. In this event right here, we have Soul Stones and Crystals. God, there's nothing in that either. Artifact Enhancement. 
crystals. Tournaments. Nope. Tag team. Nope. There's nothing in tag team. There we go. Uh, here in the tag team event, we have uh, Ancient Shard at 2,400. The, there's always a chance to claim shards in a lot of different places in the game. We have free shards that are in the shop every day. We have Ancients that pop up in the shop. The Mystery Shards there and Ancients pop up once a week. You're going to be able to claim them as part of your quests and milestones there are missions that can contain shards. They pop up a lot of different places in the game. But your two areas that you're going to want to make sure you're collecting is Clam Boss, both Demon Lord and the Hydra. In the Demon Lord, if you are in a clan that is playing and completing Brutal Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare, if you can build a team, this should be your main focus when you first get into the game, is to put together a team that can complete Brutal in at least three keys. Eventually, you'll be able to one-key Brutal and then move on to Nightmare and be able to claim Nightmare within three to four keys. And then once that's done, you move on to Ultra Nightmare and be able to complete that in three to four keys because once you can earn all the coins for the, multiple, the top tier reward in Ultra Nightmare, you have a chance for ancient voids and sacreds. And if your clan is knocking off that demon every day and you get your way in there, you get double rewards for killing them. So once it goes, it's dead and it kicks over to infinity, you can get double rewards. And as you continue to progress through the game, if you've got a team that can one key ultra nightmare, you can easily one key Ultra Nightmare, Nightmare, and Brutal every single day. And then you'll be receiving, if your clan is killing all three of those, you can get six chests a day that give out Ancient Voids and Sacred Shards. You don't guarantee rewards every day, but they are available and they do come into play a lot more than you would think. So focus primarily on Demon Lord. That's in the very beginning, it's going to seem like that is really difficult to achieve. But if you focus on your clan boss team early and it will it will eventually come. And that's within like mid game players are usually one king, at least nightmare, not necessarily ultra nightmare. But those rewards that are there, it does make it worth uh, striving for Hydra as well. Hydra's rewards are a little bit different. We're getting soul stones out of Hydra, and those soul stones are something else that we're going to have to hoard. But with Hydra Clash, if you're winning your Hydra Clash, you're having a chance towards Primal Quartz, which will then turn over into Primal Shards, which is one of the other shards here. The Primal Shards that you turn trade in your Primal Quartz to earn those. Every possible place that you can come up with shards does make a big difference if you hold those shards and use them during Summon Rush. Uh, big thing next to talk about is energy. Right now you can see that I have 926 energy. That's because we're just now finishing up uh, the, the uh, fusion event for December. Now that this is over, I will start stockpiling energy to put it back and prepare for January's fusion event. Uh, you're going to receive energy every day and for just completing a quest, daily a quest. And once you complete your advanced quest for the day, you always get an energy refill. Uh, there are promo codes. Those are a, a great way to come up with uh, energy as far as that goes. There is also a chance to earn energy in the clan shop. It, this number one in the clan shop is either coins or energy. You're going to want to buy that when it's coins. There is also energy that pops up in Tag Team Arena in the Bazaar. That energy is right there for a 1,000. You you're also have shards here in this. We have Void and Ancient, which it looks like I've already purchased mine for those. There just There's a lot of different places to come up with those uh, resources that you need. The next resource to talk about is gems. If you haven't already 
unlocked and completed your mine, it needs to be a big priority if you're going to be long-term playing Raid Shadow Legends. Hold your gems. You're going to earn those all over the place, from quests to using the mine every day to events and tournaments, but those gems will translate directly to energy as needed during the fusion event. So don't waste them. Make sure you have about a thousand or more gems coming into each fusion event because that will give you uh, 20 to 30 refills of energy and that may be necessary to be able to complete the dungeon diving events. Uh, there is also autoplay. You see these auto battles that are here that have popped up as Cursed City rewards and free gifts. I will hold on to those until I absolutely need them and use them during the fusion events. That's why those are sitting there and are available. You can get those in a lot of different places. Like these have come from daily playtime uh, or the, I think I got some just recently from an update. We had the patch 8.0 update and they gave a free reward with multi battles, Curse City rewards. That's where the free gift from us was. It was a part of the Christmas gift. There was a Christmas gift that gave out all multi battles. Uh, the next thing is, is while you're on your, uh, your between fusions, instead of logging in every day and just randomly playing events and tournaments that don't really benefit you for the fusion, spend your time in the arena. There are a lot of great rewards in the arena, and these do not use energy. They don't refill the same way as everything else. And you can use Live Arena, Classic Arena, and Tag Team Arena to earn resources that you can use in other places. Tag Team, specifically through the Bazaar. Uh, Classic Arena can give you rewards when there are arena tournaments or uh, events that come along with, you know, where you can earn points in the arena because those do not, uh, they do not hurt you by playing those events uh, when you're not in the middle of a fusion. So use the arena map uh, to basically placate your time when you're between events. Uh, what else? The Great Hall. That's another thing. I mean, if you're just basically when you're waiting for a fusion, use arena for Great Hall and resources and to keep you sharp moving forward. Next up, if we're not in a fusion, avoid events avoid tournaments that give out rewards that do not benefit you for your fusion. So like right now we're coming into a sand devil turn attack event. I would not waste the energy on sand devil turn attack because none of the rewards that are here are, are worth the energy spent to be able to complete this event. Uh, the same way with like the t uh, the dragon turn attack that is coming. Instead, focus on the tag arena tournament because that is one you can play between fusions. Uh, training. There's always champion training that is part of the fusion events. So prepare for that. As part of your daily qu quests, you have to complete training in the tavern. So when you have to do this in the tavern... Use your common champions to train each other uh, instead of using brews. Hold your brews for the fusion when there is an actual champion training event. Your brews will do more benefit to you there. So just use commons to train commons to complete your daily quests. Then hold everything that you have and don't do any big training even though you want to. For champions, so like right now, if we're claiming Blizzard the Howler from the December fusion, I will not train or build Blizzard until the January fusion is live. We're also going to hold all of our fusion fragments uh, for any of these fragment summons. So we're really close to Euros the Soul Cage. Once he's completed, I will not claim him until we are in the middle of a champion chase in the January fusion. Same way with Yella Gurna, because the way those uh, champion chases work is you can claim these from your fusions, uh, your fragments or your fusions, if you have anything that's available here, 
and you earn credit during those events. So it's all about doubling up. Same thing with Soul Stones. Like right now in the December fusion, I've used all of the Soul Stones that I've hoarded since last month as part of the Hero's Path because the Hero's Path is paying out for summoning souls and Soul Stones. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want to focus on the it, each day, make sure you use your six keys. I know you're going to spend some energy doing the six keys in Iron Twins, but it does give out rewards in the by way of Soul Stones and uh, different resources here for the Altar of Souls that will help you achieve more souls that you can claim during the events and it will also give you a leg up in the cursed city where you may need awakenings for some of the levels and the resources that you're getting from cursed city will help you during the next fusion uh, think about it all on the two on two off method so you have two weeks of a fusion uh, so like we just did two weeks for the December fusion. Now we're going to have a couple week break to prepare for the January fusion. And those two weeks that we're off, that's when we're focusing on arena and just stockpiling our resources. Uh, that The only thing we're going to do each day, log in, we're going to do clan boss, we're going to do iron twins. We're going to do all of our daily quests, all of our advanced quests, and then we're going to spend the rest of our time in the arena until the fusion shows up. Now, once the January fusion is here, we're going to wait for the calendar. And the reason we wait for the calendar is there is a big chance that we can double up on stuff. So we're looking at the December fusion just to be able to see what we're talking about. So like in the very beginning, we had champion training and we had dragon. So if we dove into dragon right away, it, you would miss out on the overlap on Saturday and Sunday where the dragon lined up with dungeon divers, the dungeon divers one event. So if you went really heavy in the very beginning of the event on Thursday and Friday, and you spent all of your resources and energy on the dragon tournament, because you're like, oh, I need to get the dragon done. Then by the time that's over and Dungeon Divers begins, you've got Dungeon Divers at the beginning. You could have held off on Dragon, doubled up rewards in Dungeon Divers, and then Ice Golem right after Dragon. Dragon and Dungeon would help you, if not completely complete the Dungeon Divers events. It, it would actually have a big chunk of the Dungeon Diver event that you could double up between the two of those. Same thing with Summon Rush, Champion Chase, everything. Don't open shards until those events are there. And make sure you plan and map this out so that you're using the coins that you're earning in the Champion Training event and in the Dungeon events to use those only when Artifact Enhancement is live because that's when you'll need to spend all those coins to be able to convert everything over uh, into artifacts that you're upgrading. Uh, and then again, with like Champion Chase, that's when you come through and you use the methods that we talk about for Champion, uh, the, like the Champion Training Tournament, where you're maximizing energy expended for the resources coming into it. All of this has to be taken into consideration so that you can maximize your rewards and with the minimal amount of shards required and energy spent for all of these fusions. And it is completely impossible to complete everything. We haven't had a fusion event in here that if you are at least level 50, they have not been uh, requiring you to spend any money in the game. The only thing that I would ever tell people is, is positive to spend money on in the game is if you are a daily player and you are in raid every day getting your daily and advanced quest complete, then I would consider buying the raid card. The raid card as part of the game does give you a bunch of resources here. Look at the raid card. I have the silver raid card active. I do use that. 
it gives you 20% more XP from campaign battles, 20% more silver from campaign battles, and then you get an additional 70 multi-battle attempts for to use towards dungeons and campaign. That does make a big difference over the course of the month. It is the one thing that I would suggest if you're going to spend any money on this game, don't open packs, don't buy shards, don't buy any resources or coins or gems or anything. Just get the raid pass and play. So I hope that information helped. If you want to know how do we complete these fusion events every month without having to buy shards and spend a bunch of money on resources in the game, that is it. Um, that's how we're going to end this here. I'm finally he sleeps. Appreciate you guys. If this information did help, make sure you subscribe here at the channel. That way you never miss when a video goes live. Appreciate you hanging out with me tonight. As long as you guys keep showing up, I'll keep making videos. Thanks for watching. If you haven't noticed, my YouTube channel has expanded. Subscribe here for Raid Shadow Legends content, but make sure you check out my other channels as well for EA Sports FC, everything automotive over at Gearheads, and visit Cringeworthy for a few laps. Subscribe links are right over there.